Now, if you have a digital watch, you may not know what clockwise means. <laughs> I'll explain it later. Uh, we're going to spin the merry-go-round clockwise. The kids are going to go through four phases. They start off in phase one. They'll be screaming at the football players. Come on, let's go. Faster, faster. Can't you go any faster? You get up around 30 miles an hour. The kids enter phase two, where they stop screaming. They just quietly concentrate on trying to hang on for dear life. <laughs> When you get to about 60 miles an hour, you enter phase three, where they start screaming again. <laughs> but now they're screaming, stop, stop, please slow down. Don't stop, they'll keep going faster and faster. When you get up around 100 miles an hour, you should enter phase four. That's where the kids begin to fly off the merry-go-round. <laughs> now when this happens, you will notice an interesting phenomena of physics. If the merry-go-round is going clockwise, whoosh, 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 when the kid flies off, whoa, the kid will be spinning clockwise until he encounters resistance, like a tree or a telephone pole. <laughs> That's because of a law in physics known as the conservation of angular momentum. You see, if a spinning object breaks apart in a frictionless environment, which the Big Bang would have been, all the fragments that fly off will spin the same direction. So many errors. The conservation of angular momentum states that in a closed system, the angular momentum remains constant despite changes in inertial mass. The common high school physics class example is to spin a classmate in a chair with his arms crossed close to his chest. When the spinning student extends his arms, his angular velocity decreases because his inertial mass has increased. This principle explains the transfer of angular momentum from the Earth to the Moon, as well as the high rotational velocity of small compact stars that form from much larger, slower rotating stars. Ultimately, the initial expansion of space-time resulted in a universe populated by small elementary particles. There were no objects thrown from a large central object. That's because the outside is moving faster than the inside. No, it would be because energy is conserved in closed systems. The professor said, yes, I know about the conservation of angular momentum. I said, well, good, sir, then I have a question for you. If the universe began as a swirling dot, shh, big bang, like you said, would you please explain to me why at two and possibly three of the planets are spinning backwards? The Big Bang Theory does not describe the beginning of the universe. A planet's rotation is determined by local gravitational interactions. Uranus's axis is tilted 82 degrees, leaving the planet practically on its side. This is thought to have occurred because of an impact event early in its history. Likewise, Venus's retrograde rotation is associated with an impact event due to its incredibly slow rotation. Pluto has an apparent retrograde rotation due to its distance. He said, that's interesting. I said, no, that's uh, more than interesting. That's kind of hard on your Big Bang Theory. Perhaps it is hard on Mr. Hovind's straw man version, but not the actual theory. Not only that, at least six of the moons are spinning backwards, and some travel backwards around their planet. Ah, our fishy friend returns, and you thought we'd lost him. Actually, 48 satellites of Jupiter, 29 satellites of Saturn, 8 satellites of Uranus, and three satellites of Neptune have retrograde orbits. Most are captured asteroids. The orbit of a moon is determined by interactions with the planet, not the Big Bang. Why? We call it gravity. He said, I don't know. Why do you think they're going backwards? At this stage, I have to honestly picture the professor kicking himself for passing on that upgrade to first class. You meet the strangest people in coach, plus you have to pay for all those little bottles of gin that you need so you can survive interacting with them. Uh, I was hoping he was going to ask that. I said, well, sir, I believe it's very simple. You see, I believe in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and God did it that way on purpose just to make the Big Bang Theory look stupid. Apparently, Mr. Hoven's deity is a literal representation of those from Monty Python's Eric the Viking, i.e. a petulant child more concerned with playing games than the search for truth.